Attention! Attention! Alexander here announcing that you are having a message. Simples! So what calls hedgerows home? Well first we need to see what kind of hedgerow we have. Some have ditches or dikes, sometimes with a row of trees and sometimes without. If they have ditches, they may have water running in them. This can be deep. And dangerous if there has been a lot of rain, so be careful. Or it may be just a series of small pools with a trickle of water between, or even completely dry. Once you have decided what your hedgerow is like, A good place to start with identifying the living things is with the plants. This is because plants are the start of many different food chains. Plants with flowers provide nectar for insects like bees and butterflies. Plants like nettles are important too. The white dead nettle provides nectar for insects like this bumblebee. Stinging nettles, while not very nice for us, are especially important for some butterflies. Not for the adult, but for the caterpillar stage. Caterpillars of several butterflies eat the leaves of stinging nettles before they change into adults like this Ad Red Admiral or Peacock. These caterpillars are in turn very important to many birds who feed their young on them. The hedgerow not only provides food, it may also provide a home for many small animals and birds. A good hedge should have several tall trees. They are important as singing posts for birds. Once you have identified some plants and animals in and around your hedgerows, you could start connecting them in a food chain to show what eats what, like this. The arrow means is eaten by. You could ask your teacher for a sheep to help you do this, either as a cut and paste exercise or on the computer. Some of the creatures you have seen can be pests on farmers crops such as aphids, which can feed on farmers' crops such as the oilseed rape, wheat and peas. They can reduce the amount of food farmers produce from these crops. So hedges are important to farmers, as some of the creatures which live in hedges can help with the control of some of the pests which attack farmers' crops. And the flowers growing in hedges provide food for bees when the crops finish flowering. Can you draw the food chains for the rest of this programme?
the tennis fans at Wimbledon often enjoy strawberries and cream. Here's how some of the strawberries are produced. We saw the strawberry plants back in January being laid to encourage new growth. By February this new growth had started and the old leaves could be removed. This looks very drastic but it is necessary to remove any pests and disease from last year. By March the strawberries are showing lots of new growth. The strawberries are sprayed against pests and diseases. The grower also does a clever trick with light to make the strawberries produce their fruit earlier than they normally would. The strawberries are given 15 minutes of light every hour to do this. Watch these lights go out and the next sections come on. Then just like the tomatoes, bees are put into the glass houses to pollinate the strawberries. Once pollinated, the plants produce lots of fruit. This fruit is then harvested, ready for you to enjoy. Look for the red tractor logo, so you know they are British strawberries. Next time we will see how the cream to go on your strawberries is made. As we saw last time, sheep and cattle are now all out in the fields eating the lovely fresh grass. Did you find out what is special about ruminants? Sheep, goats and cattle belong to a group of animals called ruminants. Ruminants have four stomachs, which is what helps them digest grass. The ruminant's first stomach, called the rumen, is its largest stomach. In a cow it will hold 180 litres. This stomach has lots of microbes in, which digest the grass for the ruminant. Ruminant helps by regurgitating and re-chewing the grass it has already eaten once. This is called ruminating or chewing the cud. If you watch ruminants carefully, you can see them doing this. 
They will chew and chew without appearing to take anything into their mouth. They are re-chewing their last meal. We often do this laid down. Once the microbees have digested the grass enough, then it continues on to the ruminants' other stomachs, where it and the microbees are digested by the cow's digestive system, just like in us. Not a very kind way to treat the microbeasts, which have digested the cow's dinner for them. Being able to eat and survive on grass makes sheep and cattle very important to farming and food production throughout the world. Grass is an amazing plant which can grow in many places which are not suitable for growing arable crops like this wheat, potatoes or these peas. This means we can still produce food from this land, which is often too steep, too wet or too stony to grow crops on. Grazing these areas has made them like they are and maintains them this way too. 